On my previous trip, I was beating hard to windward and then this happened. My bilge is full of water up until the batteries. That's not good. I had to turn off the automatic bilge pump because um, it felt like it was going off for no reason, but there's a serious a lot of water in the last hour. That's not good. Today I'd like to talk about the challenge of sailing the East Caribbean. The East Caribbean is like a half circle. This is north, east, south and west. The southernmost island being Grenada, going north passing St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe, Montserrat, Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Bart, St. Martin, USVI, BVI and Puerto Rico and a bunch of smaller ones in between. To be as safe as possible from hurricanes, you want to ideally be south of St. Vincent. Now here comes the challenge. The cruising season runs from the 1st of December until the 1st of June. The height of hurricane season is between 15 August and late September. So whether you should be cruising in those gray areas of June until August and October until November will be for another video. Generally speaking, the wind direction in the first months of the season being December 1st until around April is north of east. After that, it will turn to south of east. So now we just did hurricane season somewhere under St. Vincent. Yay, hurricane season is over. Let's go explore all those northern islands. But in order to explore the islands up until Martinique, we have to go in the northeast direction. And that is exactly where the general wind is coming from early in the season. So we either have to tack or wait for a quiet window to motor or wait for a temporary wind shift. Once we get to Martinique, it gets easier because we are furthest to the east and our new direction will be mostly northwest. And this is often good doable with northeast winds. The second challenge is once we get north and we want to spend another hurricane season south, now it is probably late May that we want to go back. And now the winds have turned mostly south of east and it is a challenge to go back south. And because the general winds are south of east, even when there is a temporary wind shift to the east or north of east, because the winds have been blowing so much time from the south of east, the swell or the waves will keep coming from the south of east, which means even though you could sail in a straight line, you're still fighting the waves. One option to not have this issue is to very early in the season take the northeast wind to go straight to, for an example, St. Martin and then in those first months of the season go back south. The other option is slowly go north and wait for temporary weather changes to have a comfortable ride. Now there's a third challenge that I am facing and that you might be facing up until a certain point. Today I'm actually going north, late in the season, which is the right time to go north at least from a wind perspective, as wind is mostly south of east. As you can see, I am heading in a northeast direction with a southeast wind. If I would be driving a car, the wind would be on the side of my car. We call that beam reach. On a boat that works a little different, on average in the Caribbean there is a current going from east to west with about one knot. A boat has to fight this current to stay on its route. It will have to turn several degrees to windward, meaning towards the wind to stay on the course. So now instead of having the wind on the beam on the side of the boat, we are slightly upwind. The challenge I am facing with a boat that has a full keel design, but most of all because I have very old sails that are worn out, is that I am getting a lot of leeway. Leeway is the amount by which the wind acting on your boat is pushing you off course. A newer design boat with new sails will have little leeway, but my boat can have up to about 25% leeway, which means even if I look at this weather and it looks like it will be on the side of the boat, because of the current and the big amount of leeway I will experience with my boat, I will have to sail fully upwind in order to stay on a direct course. And beating upwind, that's how we call it, is very hard on both crew and the boat because you are heeled over more and you are beating against the waves which puts more stress on the boat. Let me know in the comments if this analysis was any helpful to you and if you'd like to hear more like this. Let's fix my problems now and sail north. Let's go to the marine store and get the non-return valve to fix my bilge pump backflow issue. <laughs> Checked into the country yesterday already. The marine store is over there.
Here they are, the non-return valves. I just have to get the right size. So I took the right hose. So it should be this one. So I got a non-return valve, a filter for my water system, a new cable for my choke, and uh, oil, because I need to do an oil change. And it's installed, yeah. I've never had a dry bilge since I own the boat and that's because of a variety of reasons. I've always been pumping out water every couple hours and always was a different reason that I later found out. And that's partly because in the 20 years before I bought the boat, the previous owners have definitely lacked a lot of maintenance. Um, besides that, a lot of the engineering that they did was just not correct. Like uh, the bilge pump, when it pumps it out, it should have a non-return valve. So why this issue came up now and not before is because I was heeled over uh, far to starboard because it was beating upwind and the bilge pump pumped it out and because I was heeled over so much uh, the hose that was in the bilge was lower than uh, where, the, where the water level was so then you get backflow. So that is solved now. Yeah, so... I've been learning so much since I owned this boat, so much, like on the one hand I'm like, oh, so many issues I've had that just you shouldn't have with a boat that was just, you know, decently maintained and, 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 and decently um, designed <clears throat> or, um, or, or uh, engineered. But uh, I, I am very appreciated for, the, for what I have learned and what I know now for uh, the future. I wasn't expecting rain. Well, guess I gotta use a headlight. And I'm putting a new filter on. This is for my gas to rev up and rev down. This is for my choke. And it used to just be able to pull it up and it is so stuck that I had to put a rag around it. And now, when I pull really hard, it still works. So obviously that needs to be replaced. The gas wire works fine, but if you look on the inside, like here, this looks terrible. It's gonna break one day. So I better replace both of, both of them. So this is the choke. I'm gonna start with opening it up here. Okay, got it loose over here and here, so I can should be able to pull it out now. Alright, I loosen it on the other side. Alright, let's take it out. Step one, about this generic Dometic wire that I'm uh, hoping to make fit. So here in the wire you can see over time how you got all these spots over here and then here is another one so while i'm installing the choke cable it works but i still have to tighten it up took the gas wire off do you think it's uh due for replacement maybe maybe yes maybe no i think so it's a bit rainy today so I definitely close the hatches when I go to the marine store. Let's see if I can find a suitable cable. All right, got a new cable. Let's install it. We are just trying to do one thing on the boat. The boat always immediately turns into this massive chaos. Okay, a new start wire and choke wire installed before I clean all this mess up here. Let's see if it's actually working. Oh, the gas is too low. A little bit more. Alright, let's 
shut it off. Huh. It's working. Nice. Took most of the day. So I've added sealant on the bottom, three bolts. This is actually what holds these two things in place. I've made it exactly the same as how it was, because that was just uh, easiest to replace it. Next project I should have done a long time ago is uh, putting a bigger hatch in here that I can open to clean the inside. Because now I can only clean it by flushing it with uh, something like bleach and I want to be able to go in with a sponge. The electric saw that I had broke because I got salt water inside the boat. So I'm doing it with a hand saw that I just bought at Ace Hardware. It's uh, a little more work, but I'm getting there. All right. Let's see if it fits. Oh, it fits perfect. Nice, let's uh, drill some holes and then clean everything up on the inside too. Got the hatch in, now it is time to take all the water out and clean it up. Because the water quality in the Caribbean really varies, I do occasionally put like a tablespoon of bleach in the water because uh, if I don't, sometimes after a certain while it starts to smell really like uh, a sulfur. You know, it's the same smell as when you sometimes go into a, a hot tub. One of the other advantages of having a bigger hatch here is that my water jugs are actually here next to my bed. So if I want, I could fill it from here. That water is looking perfectly clean. Nice. Let's close it up and then let's change the water filter. I'm putting in a five micron filter, which basically means everything bigger than five microns won't go through this filter. And that's the only filter I have. In the future, I'd love to upgrade to uh, maybe have a UV filter again. I mean, the best thing is to have a water maker, obviously, but you know, that's expensive uh, because then you always have a certain quality of water like now you never really know what quality of water you're gonna get um, how do I get water I've shown you a bunch of times but I'm gonna get some today so I'm gonna show you again trying to figure out where the fuel dock is and I always love it when Navionics asks me to log in again Navionics is my navigation software and sometimes I wonder what if this happens if I'm in the middle of the ocean because it I was logged in I'm always logged in and sometimes it randomly asks me to log in and then I cannot open the app. If I'm in the middle of the ocean, that happens. I suddenly just don't have navigation anymore. That's crazy. All right, well, I'll log in again. Is my dinghy going to sink with all these things full in it? Ah, well, I can take another one. I hear in Grenada, fuel is really cheap, but once you go up St. Vincent and the Grenadines, up to Martinique, Dominica, fuel gets like 60, 70% more expensive. The field dock is really close by, it's only over there. They didn't have gasoline, they did have diesel and water. Welcome to the Caribbean. This is just how it works here. I'll check out in Kiriakou, the other island of Grenada, and I'll get some gasoline there. I really need a new dinghy. I think in Martinique, that's a good place to find one. I'm going to the uh, swap meet. It's two and a half miles, and the part is over open ocean. Um, I really don't like to go over the open ocean too much by dinghy, but it's really calm weather today. So I think it should be fine. Let's go. Little change of plans. When I got out in the open sea, the seas were quite rough on my dinghy. And I've always heard that there is a shortcut road to walk to Hog Island, where the swap meet is. So, let's do that. It smells amazing here. Let's go.
that's the prettiest part of Grenada I've seen so far. After this should be a uh, dirt road. This is Hog Island. I spent some time here last year. Prickly Bay is on the other side, two hills further. It's a really nice place. Every week there are gatherings for cruisers. Now there is the swap meet and uh, oh, there's a bar. And you can barbecue here. Made it to the swap meet. Always uh, making burgers. Let's see if I... Uh, can find something. Hopefully one of those autopilots, but <laughs> unlikely, but we'll see. I bought two GoPro batteries. That's better as nothing. You never know. Sometimes you go to a swap meet and you find a lot of goodies, and sometimes not. Get Let's go back to the boat. I'm leaving Grenada. I went to Grenada to meet up with uh, Duke and Ro from Wildlife Crafting. And I'm going back to Kariaku, which is still part of Grenada. I'm gonna check out there. And then, gonna explore some more parts of the north of uh, the East Caribbean. I've got full sails out. Might be gusting up into 21 knots today. Might have to reef later, we'll see. That's St. George, the capital of Grenada. Looks a bit hazy. Might get a bit of rain, but uh, who knows? For the rest, open sky, a lovely day. I think I have a little rip in my... Uh, Oh yeah, you see it? Oh, that's still, still broken. Okay. Oh wow, a lot of mini dolphins over there. Look at that. <laughs> oh. That's one of the things I love about sailing, when there's suddenly nature and a bunch of dolphins around you. It's just amazing. The clouds in the channel behind uh, the island look a little grayish. And grayish is usually means a little unstable. So I reef the main now, just because to do that I have to go on deck. And I'll just go with full sail. So it might be a little slower, but safe. <laughs> Almost at Kariku, two more miles. I got my speedy stitcher and a piece of material. It's a bit windy, so I don't know how it's gonna go to bring the seal down, but uh, let's bring it down and see. My seal has so many patches, it is uh, quite uh, ready for replacement sometime. But uh, this is where it ripped, so let's fix it. So I've glued a patch on this side and on the other side, and now I'm gonna stitch through it. That was actually a lot harder as I thought it would be. It's uh, by no means a masterpiece, but... Uh, Let's see if it holds. Yeah, 
this was my first try ever at trying to fix my jib and it's very calm here but there's still quite a bit of wind and it's quite violent when I try to bring the jib down and when I try to bring it back up it wasn't easy at all so I can only imagine that this can be quite a challenge doing this in uh, heavier seats all right well I hope it's so good now for now I'm gonna need a new jib anyway um, but I hope it's good for the next, I don't know, month or two. I'm just putting some more wire on this thing because uh, if something breaks on the way, I want it to be full with wire so I don't have to do that on the way. If you wonder why do I have a wrench on one side, it's because then it's easier to wrap this uh, line around it. All right, this one is ready for its next adventure. Hopefully not anytime soon. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you haven't already, consider subscribing or just giving it a like. It's a free way of showing your support and it does actually help me a lot. I'll see you next time.